Namaste to all. Let's start today's panel discussion with a silent prayer. Namaste. I welcome all to this panel discussion organized by Confederation of Kerala Sahodia Complexes. It is an organization for all, holding hands with all CBSC schools in Kerala. Confederation's academic and training wing has been instrumental in bringing professionalism into teaching community. This panel discussion is designed to empower the teachers of CBSC affiliated schools who train students for the CBSC term to examinations of class 12. As we are all aware of that CBSC has made some fundamental changes in the question paper pattern, which we would be analyzing for 12th standard biology in detail in the next 30 minutes. I'm Dr. Deepa from GK Shetty Vivehanda Vidyalaya, Chennai. And with me in our panel, three members are here. Srimadhi Sabita from Bharadiya Vidya Bhavan comes under Malaba Sahodaya. Dr. Rani from Chinme Vidyalaya Kollam. Srimadhi Naisal from Guruhulam Vidyalaya Public School. Guruhulam Public School, Trishul. On behalf of Confederation of Kerala Sahodaya Complexes, I welcome you all to this program. So let's start our program. Same. Um, in the CBSC curriculum, new 21-22 curriculum, there are, there are a lot of changes when compared to last year. What are the changes in the new curriculum? You can. What are changes? Thank you, ma'am, for your introduction. I'm thanking. Uh, Confederation of Kerala Sahodaya Complexes for giving this wonderful platform for us. And this curriculum of 2021-22 is with tremendous changes. And it is divided into two terms. And term one is already over. And term two consists of six chapters. And they are chapter eight, human health and diseases. Chapter 10, microbes in human welfare. Then chapter 11, biotechnology, principles and processes. Then chapter 12, biotechnology and its application. And chapter 13, organisms and population. Finally, the chapter 15, biodiversity and its conservation. Okay. And three chapters were deleted. And they are chapter 9, that is strategies for enhancement in food production. Chapter 14, ecosystem. And chapter 16, environmental issues yes That's overall we have only in second term we have only six chapters so students and teachers will feel comfortable in teaching and learning biology so no um, what is the difficulty in learning the six chapters in the second term okay there are a lot of changes in the question paper pattern what are the changes even though we know that so all the biology teachers and the students must understand what are the changes and uh, they have to prepare for the examination. That's why. Again, what are the changes in the new question paper? Yeah, Deepa. thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Deepa, ma'am, and uh, uh, Sahodaya Complex for giving a chance for participating in this panel discussion. Yeah, we come to the points. This time, CBSC has planned to do two term exams, term one and term two. Term one exam over, 
now term 2 sample paper issued by cbsc so we are going to analyze the sample paper of the term 2 exam and this sample paper has three sessions and 13 questions and all questions are compulsory and section a has six questions of two mark each section b also with six questions of three mark each section c with only case based study question only one question with five mark itself okay then there are there is no overall choices but internal choices are there in section a there are two choice questions that is question number two and six with the choices and in section b one choice question that is question number seven with choice questions and in section c a one question only one question that with the choice itself and a student has to attempt only one of the alternatives in such choice questions then another thing that this uh, cbsc you know cbsc in the curriculum itself there are weightage of units given and this time three units are the unit unit 8 9 and 10 then in the unit 8 human biology and welfare the weightage of marks it is 14 marks and for the next unit biotechnology and from biotechnology 11 mark questions then last unit that is ecology ecology with uh, 10 marks that is the weightage of unit wise chapter wise weightage it is so total 35 marks itself okay nice so in the question paper there are three sections section a b and c section yeah. a with the six questions in that two internal choices are there each question carries two marks and in section B there are again six questions with the uh, three marks each. There is one internal choice and section C with the one case based question with internal choice. So this and is the question pattern. Yeah and this choice is no, choices the, the, that questions may be from the same chapter or from the different chapter also. Yes yes exactly. So the uh, choice questions may be from the same chapter or from the different chapters. Sometimes it may be from two different units. The inter uh, unit questions also can be asked. Yeah, it's the integrated type questions. Integrated also. type of questions may be asked. Yeah, and the that. weightage also exactly what is given in the curriculum is followed in the question paper. What about the competencies? Yeah, yeah. The, in the curriculum itself, the competency also given. And there, there are three level of competencies are there. That in that first one is demonstrate knowledge and understanding. That is with 50 percentage. And the second level that is application of knowledge. That is with 30 percentage. And the last, the third level that is the analyze, evaluate and create level. That's with 20 percentage. And when we go through this sample paper, the CV, this sample paper is also with the same competency level. It is maintained the same competency level. Exactly. Is, exactly. Yeah. I think all others will agree with this. The, all the competencies, what is given in the curriculum is exactly followed in the sample paper. You agree? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. That means out of 13 questions, six questions in knowledge and understanding level, four questions in application level, and three questions in the anal analyze, uh, evaluate, and create level. Yes. But CBSC is maintaining the competency level also in the sample paper. Yes. Within the question itself, the number of competencies are tested, like analyzing, understanding, and application. Like that, two or three competencies are tested within your question. Such a, a very good question paper it is. Okay. The question paper setter has taken enough pain to prepare the question paper. So, really, it is interesting to read and. Uh, discuss the questions in the classroom then um, what are the difficulty level questions are the critical thinking questions you find anyone uh, being a teacher is not a status but a responsibility thank you confederation of kerala rahodia complexes for this wonderful initiative 
which could benefit our children in the upcoming board examinations the biology question paper is a competency based question paper where the critical thinking and the problem solving ability of the child is well tested so all the cognitive levels as being set all the cognitive levels are being assessed as per the given weightage and cbsc have strictly adhered to that competency various competencies as mentioned earlier by maxwell man now the very interesting thing is that the questions are not put directly to the child it is framed in such a manner that the child should read through the lines understand and then derive the conclusion so it's a well set question paper most of all the questions we should say is like that is presented like that way so that is the uh, what uh, difference what we see uh, in the sample paper uh, from the previous one and the now what is being published by cbsc previous years and this year, this term two sample paper now talking about some of the questions the question number 2 we could see that a pictorial representation of the condition of the coronary artery of a patient is depicted over there and then asked about two bioactive agents which could improve the mode of action or mode of the which could improve the more the condition they the streptokinase the child should have con can have confusion because streptokinase is an enzyme that which is not told directly in the that is not directly given as a line in the ncert textbook so first the child to confuse the child the first part the context is given by giving a picture or representation and all but if the concept is clear for the child he can very well answer it yes in so, the textbook it is given that it is uh, actually streptokinase is given under enzymes when the next paragraph starts another 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 bio yeah so that uh, streptokinase is included under enzymes as well as under uh, bioactive bioactive so the child has Molecule. to understand yes. that then only can answer but the picture yes. gives the uh, clue what the child is expected to write so yes. child has to take time to read and even though it is little bit confusing but the, all the um, answers the child can uh, recollect and write from the text yeah Good. then coming to question number 8 8 yeah okay. uh the first part is about the context only second part the question comes so by reading the first part if the concept is very well clear for the child he will not be carried away by when it epicture representation is given or if a context is given he will be very more uh, confident about the answer so the question number 8 it is not directly put that is the type of response is elicited by the human beings when encountered by a pathogen that is the question but the primary response or the secondary response is not like asked like that way or an anamnestic response is the term is not at all used but the child if the concept is clear for him he can very well answer they one thing also the child has to remember that our body appears to have the memory of the first encounter so he should not forget the role of the t cells and b cells over there so this type of questions are asked to assess the clarity of the concept so that also the child should understand if he is having the clarity he could get what all the marks for the answer then coming to the question number 12 what i have noticed is that the gel electrophoresis one question is there it is not the same image as we see in the ncert textbook so the images or the pictorial representations it can vary but here also concept clarity is there the child could answer it where where the child has to when uh, when he get when he get a picture like this way he should first look for the position of the wells there where the dna is being inserted and also the direction of movement secondly the direction of the movement that also has to be looked into the if the child knows that 
he could very well answer so it is only based the question papers the questions are framed to judge the clarity of the concept it's a very well set question paper which we should appreciate exactly for eighth question there is a there is a no terms used as a primary uh, response or secondary response or an anonymous response child has to understand from the paragraph uh, uh, by encounter by uh, by a pathogen from that words the child can get the answer okay then question number 12 is quite interesting as uh, sabida ma'am said this type of questions may be asked we cannot expect the exact diagram from the textbook the textbook diagram may be changed in a different way if the child is very clear about the concept he can he or she can um, answer the questions given so we have to train our students in such a way by giving the same diagram book diagram in different ways not the exact book diagram anything else from your side ma'am rani ma'am or naisal ma'am yeah that pictures we can give in different angles yeah what are the other questions you when can consider the question number 4 question number 4 okay ma'am ha huh. yeah it's an example of integrated type of question there are two concepts integrated here one is sewage treatment and second one is biological oxygen demand and here that picture no it is an illustration of these two concepts and here we can see the sugar factory in the that is water sample collected from a river itself and near to the a point there is sugar factory and in between a and b point there is sewage discharge point and between b and c point there is sewage treatment plant also So if the student know the concept, it is easy for them. Actually, it is an application level question. But uh, the student, if we know that the sewage is discharged, means normally the BOD will be higher there. That is why when we go through the numericals given in the A, B, C point four hundred, four eighty, and eight ml, the child can easily write the answer. It is four eighty mg per liter. Okay, like this uh, pictorial depiction of the some concepts. See how to give practice to the students. Yeah. So it is only a paragraph. It is given biochemical oxygen demand, and how it is, uh, uh, in where it increases, when it decreases. That shows the pollution level. Everything we are explaining in the class. But uh, like this concepts, we have to give pictorial depiction that will be helpful for the child to. Write any type of an, uh, question. Uh, answer this type of questions. Yeah. Then when we come to the question number eleven. Eleven. Hmm. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. It is a uh, that that is about the sacred group, and this picture or this picture is not in the CBSE biology textbook, but this concept they are studying about the concept group. So based on that, the picture also given in the question paper. So they have to analyze that, and then can come to the conclusion of it. Then in the B section of the same question, there are numericals given. So sometimes the children may get confused. But if a child knows the concept that the species richness increases according with the according to the increase in area, when the area increases, the species richness also increases. then when we compare when the child can compare the numerical value of it 0.7 and 0.15 means easily the child can answer that so but it is based uh, uh, totally based on the area. area so when the area increases the species richness increases it increases yeah. uh, okay when they read they'll understand yeah anything else yes ma Two yeah, more questions yeah. also there, ma'am. Okay. In section B, seventh question, and uh, the over part of that question is little confusing. That is, the question is given that a person is suffering from a high grade fever, and a child has to answer whether that is a symptom of whether it is typhoid or that of pneumonia or that of malaria. So, for answering this question, it. a uh, student should be sure that 
whatever be the specific symptoms of each and every diseases that is typhoid and uh, the fever maybe the fever may be the symptom but it has some specialties some specificities also there and a child should have a thorough knowledge in distinguishing all these type of diseases based on the fever itself am i right ma'am this question yes 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 so of uh, typhoid pneumonia and malaria for all the diseases fever is one of the symptoms so one of the symptoms but uh, fever duration and uh, the frequency all that will temperature chill all those uh, the high temperature low temperature all that will vary according to the disease so in general student will write the answer as fever if you ask any question so for example if you ask only typhoid they will write the symptom as fever but if the question is like this what's the difference in the uh, fever symptom of fever in typhoid pneumonia and malaria child has to write the specific answer yes very good question next one more question also that is the section c second uh, the, in that section that is section c one question that is about the restriction enzyme and in this question the activity of the restriction enzyme bam which one is given but in ncert textbook the activity of the restriction enzyme icor one is given and wherever the recognition sequence wherever the palindrome sequence everything is clearly given in the ncert textbook for icor one but for bam h1 the specific sequence is not given but this is asked as a question here so we have to train our students to uh, to that is uh, how to answer this type of question another restriction enzymes are also asking whether where, where, where its recognition sequence is where where it is cutting in the palindrome sequence all these things we should make them familiar with am i right yes. ma'am yes, ma yes one yes, more yes, thing yes. also there ma'am that is a student has to answer one more thing that is the remainder that is whatever the things after cutting with the restric uh, restriction enzyme then the student has to write about the dna fragment the sequence of the dna fragments in the orientation that is 5 prime 3 prime as well as in the next orientation that next sequence also the students have to write yes so with the previous knowledge to, uh, our students studied only about the eco r1 so with that basic knowledge they have to write the answer for whatever restriction enzyme is asked here the clue is given so no need to worry about that they must know the there is a palindromic sequence that has to be identified the partic uh, particular restriction enzyme every restriction enzyme has the ability to recognize the particular palindromic sequence and that will cut at the specific site so this concepts our children know e regarding eco r1 restriction endonuclease eco r1 based on the bam h1 is asked so the child can answer with the previous knowledge yes anything else i think these are the questions yes to ma'am the or question is of that is also okay. or question of that last one yeah, yeah. section c yeah. they that also it is given in a, as a picture about graphical representation which is which may be new to a biology student so uh, the uh, concept is very because they have given uh, about application of the bt and the non bt both all the things they are given that the children representation histogram is given there also the child could analyze compare and then evaluate which is based on his knowledge of understanding knowledge of understanding of the concept he could very well know that but when you when we train children as teachers we have to give this type of questions also including the graphical representation in our model question papers and all something related to some topic if it is easy for the child then to assess what are saying is right so this pictorial depiction graphical depiction we have to give more practice it's not exactly given in the book based on that we have to give more practice to the students within this question number of three competencies three or four competencies are tested so like this we will we can expect the questions in the board examination it's not going to be very easy child has to read each and every concept in this textbook 
each and every word in the textbook, then only the child can answer all the questions. So we have to give enough practice to the students. So what are the different ways? So what are the methodologies you are following? What are the different ways you can help our children to prepare for the examination? Uh, thinking yeah. about the preparation, uh, the diagram. First of all, the child has to practice lot of questions. Different type of questions he has to practice. Only then they could know what is the value point expected. Then only he will know about it. What is the correct value point? Then he can score good marks. One thing is that then all the diagrams that has to be studied, the labeling of that and the footnotes which is given just below the diagrams that also is very important. He cannot just leave it. He has to go through it, read it and study. He can prepare the short notes while studying. Flow charts can be, they can, they themselves can prepare the flow charts, tabular columns, mind mapping techniques can be employed. All this will be helping them to score good marks. And a lot of like we also, when we prepare our model question paper, this type of pictorial representations have to be included. Then graphical representations have to be included. All those we have to train. The teachers can train. Sure. Actually, uh, in that uh, diagram based to questions, sir. So the footnote is very, very important. Some concepts are not given in the context, but the, in the footnote, the, the answer is there. For example, isolation of DNA, the spooling technique. Then PBR322, uh, ROB, also roll of the ROB gene. So that answers are given only in the footnote. So the child should read that footnote, all the labelings and the functions of each part. That is very, very important. Diagram based questions, sir. We can expect number of questions. Diagram based questions. As value students, they must know to draw the diagram. Maybe the direct drawing also may be asked. More practice to be given to the diagram part. And ma'am told about the tablet columns. Tablet columns based on the uh, diseases, human health and diseases. In that chapter, name of the organism. Under which category it comes, name of the disease comes, and the symptoms of the disease. If you prepare the tablet column, that will be helpful for the child to remember the specific points, specific symptoms, specific organism which causes the particular disease. Likewise, it is very helpful. Then the tablet column in microbes in human welfare. There are the different microbes. What are the microbes? Microbes. Name of the microbe, under which category it comes, name of the product produced, and the uses of the product. Like this, if we, if the, uh, if you practice to the students to prepare the tablet column, that will be helpful. Likewise, um, population interaction. Population interactions, um, mutualism, commensalism, which organism is getting benefited, which organism is affected. It is simple if we give the examples in the tablet column, it will be helpful for them to identify the exact answer. Then flow charts, for example, um, for sewage treatment, if you give that answer in the form of, if you ask the students to prepare the answer in the form of flow chart, if they write the answer uh, and support their answers with the flow chart, that will be helpful, easy to score one. Uh, then flow charts for RNA in the frame. When they read the concept, that will not be easy. So when they prepare the flow chart, they will remember the exact points. So Sabida Ma'am, whatever you told is the value points, diagram based questions, tabular columns, mind maps, flow charts, all these are the various methods of giving practice to the students to understand the concept and remember the exact points then only they can answer to the question. Within a question itself, there will be number of subdivisions. They have to answer to the specific um, uh, question. And each value point has a particular mark. So that practice also we have to give. When we conduct these model examinations, when we do the correction, uh, we have to give the marks in such a way. Half mark, one mark. So, where the value points are there, how much mark for that, that we have to give 
in the answer paper itself so that child will understand where he or she has committed mistake where he lost the mark everything that will be clear that so we too have to give importance in evaluating the answer paper in a perfect way so that will be helpful for the child to find out where she committed the mistake then um, what are the other methods ma'am if you have others can also respond rani ma'am or nisil ma'am okay ma'am thank you ma'am hmm. and when we give practice okay it should be time bound ma'am okay that is almost all the questions when we go through the sample question paper one question near to two or three sentences a single that is student if you want if he or she want to answer she has to go or he has to go through the lines then only that that will take time so when we give practice for our students it should be time bound and ask our students when they study when they learn a concept ask our students to frame a question from that concept itself framing questions themselves is also a helpful method for understanding a particular concept it is not a single sentence make it as a paragraph let them to do that that's a suggestion from me ma'am yes exactly time management we have to give practice to the students students time management because each and every question reading time it takes time to read it's not direct questions it's a it's not given directly it takes time for the child to read and understand and recollect the answer okay time management also we have to give importance anything else ma'am from nisil ma'am is there anything yeah ma'am mm -hmm. there are only 13 questions in question paper and two hours are there but all questions are very lengthy questions that's why time management we told anything else ma'am uh, that ch children should have the patience to read the questions they should understand the question then they have to answer that question Father, we have to give more practice in the uh, examination. So we yeah. have to conduct more model examinations, revision examinations. That will be helpful to the children to come up. Am I right, ma'am? Uh, another thing that in this sample paper there are pictures out out from the textbook. Yeah. So we also have to collect different pictures of different concepts. Especially that organisms and population chapter and biodiversity. There are lot yeah. of examples are there yes even all the examples pictures are not given that we have to give uh, yeah. when we show that to the students they will familiarize with that there is yeah. chance for asking questions from that yes ma'am yeah all so, right yeah. so likewise wherever the pictorial depictions we can show to the students we have to show in the classroom that will help the child to uh, face the examination so when the diagram comes in the we have to give more practice to the class so we um, uh, then more question banks banks are very helpful with children so we are uh, in our team we can prepare a lot of questions because with the uh, uh, somewhat based on the cbsc question paper like the cbsc question paper what difficulty level questions we have to give not directly from the textbook so that has to be done chapter this can prepare this pattern of questions and make the child practice you have to sit with them and they practice to them that provides different pattern yes so such the chapter wise question bank can be prepared and given practice to the students okay now so these are the different ways by which uh, we can give practice to the students to score very good marks in the board examination Ma'am, one more thing yeah. to add: uh, supplementary material that yeah, should not be. Yeah. Yeah. Supplementary yeah. material. The uh, it is given uh, the bio biology resource. So in the previous website, it is given that the child has to be, and also in the curriculum, certain concepts are extra. Around some five, for example, not given in the introductory textbook. We have to give notes. We have to read the curriculum. What other topics are not given? That we have to give that. In addition, book bag questions. So even though we get number of question bags and give revision to the students, we can give them book bag questions. In that book bag question, what I find is uh, one question. For example, single cell protein. Single cell protein is given under single cell protein is given under microscopic human welfare. 
I think so. Others will come. See, um, micro seed human welfare, but that answers what is the protein is given under strategy. So we should not skip that one. So strategies in the production is the deleted group. So, but the question is even in the next chapter, one question is human welfare. That we have to keep it. So when we come, when we read the different questions, we will come to know what are the extra answers we can give. That we have. Then, uh, what about the practice, the biology or the biology teachers? So we are giving practice to the students for the practical examination. So uh, I think that is the for us. There are two term exams, term one and term two, term one exam over, and term two, uh, term one and term two with 15 marks itself. And in term two, there are two sections, part A and part B, and part A with major experiment and minor experiment. And major experiment this time it is slide preparation. It is it is with the four marks. And part uh, major minor experiments that is soil analysis and uh, water analysis, and from that one question will come and it is of three marks. And in part B, it is about the spotters identification questions, and there are three questions will be the, the three questions ch children has to uh, write the answers, and each question carries one mark. Then record viva record plus viva. Then project and its viva all together five marks. Total it is fifteen marks. That is four marks for the slide preparation and three mark for the minor experiment, three mark for the spotters and five mark for record viva and project viva. Okay, it's very clear. Fifteen marks already we completed in totally thirty marks for the practical. Fifteen marks examination we conducted in term one. Term two, there is one major experiment for four marks and one minor experiment for three marks and three spotters. Record viva and project viva together five marks, totally fifteen marks. Okay, so projects, what type of projects we can give to the already it is over in majority of the schools we completed the project. Okay, so that's hmm. Uh, that is investigatory projects. CBC is insisting for the investigatory investigatory projects, but because of this pandemic condition. We can't give an elaborate project for our students, and they can do in their home or the school with the available materials. Simple experiments or simple projects they can do. But already almost all the schools have done that, and they finalized their project. Am I right, ma? I think so. Yes, 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 yes. Finalized. So simple projects, what the simple child can project. do of their own yeah. Okay. In the school or at home, that has to be given because they uh, cannot go to the lab and do the experiments. So whatever they do, we have to accept, and uh, the child must know about the particular concept. That's all. Yes, ma'am. So hope you have completed all the discussion. So we have covered all the areas: uh, curriculum, question paper, and also practicals. Uh, how to uh, give practice to the students to score good mark in the uh, board examination. And also practicals and anything else to be added? I think it's enough. Yeah, uh, yeah ma'am. That is uh, one thing uh, which I want to say in this platform uh, yes. so that uh, it is benefited to all our children. Yeah. Yes. Because, um, the, uh, sometimes they are asked to write to justify the statement and all. And uh, these children, they never write yes or no. Um, so for correction, evaluation, we, it is half a mark is allotted for that yes or no. Many times the yes. child. Uh, what they forget to write that, so please yes. don't forget it. That's my request to our children. Yes, yes. Right. Like, as far as possible, the child will write yes. any yes. answer. Yes. He or she will just write yes or no. Yes. That has a specific mark, so there is chance for this. So we have to insist those students to write that yes or no answer first, then uh, we have to explain about the particular concept. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. For so anything else to be added? Shall we continue? Okay. So here the discussion, I think, uh, is very useful.
to class for the teachers and the students i thank all my panel members for their commitment to take this opportunity to thank the confederation of kerala sahodya complex for this wonderful initiative thank you and wish you all a very good so our students to come out successfully in their academics and their life for that we are all working together for bringing out the better future okay thank you all thank you all all together we can bring the change thank you thank you thank you, thank you.